this is uh, just the ophthalmology uh, view uh, of. Uh, um, okay, there you go. Uh, of course, to whoever this is. So uh, glaucoma manifests uh, in different areas of the eye. We can have uh, damage on the nerve as if the pressure run high for too long. We can have anomalies on the angle. We can have anomalies on the cornea, like clouding, uh, tearing uh, on the eye. So what happens is for the eye, when the pressure is high, uh, they can be damaged to the cornea, like the inside layer of the uh, cornea can have like some little breaks. Or... Also, the pressure, uh, continuous pressure on the nerve might make that the fibers die. And we see that the, the hole inside of the nerve that we have in here just gets bigger and bigger because the cells on the nerve start to die. So it is very important to take care of the pressures before it uh, produces any kind of damage. And also, if we are dealing with children, make sure uh, we check that the drainage, uh, there's no anomalies on the drainage on the angle of the eye and deal with the amblyopia. So that, that means that if we have glaucoma in one eye, that eye is at higher chance to have uh, to become lazy or not develop quite as right as the eye that is not affected. So we have to control pressure and then check that the eye develops the same as the uh, other eye. Glaucoma manifests like this on little kids. So it's a child trying to put the toy and can barely open the eyes. It's like the, the light is really bothering this, this poor baby. It's like trying to open. It's like they're steering. The eyelids kind of close. That's what they call blepharospasm. So it's like this child actually had pre high pressures in both eyes. And this is like a classic presentation, like pressures like were extremely, extremely high in both of her eyes. We have a lot of types of glaucoma. The most common one is like primary, has nothing to do with the stage ever. But uh, there's other kind of secondaries. Everyone is unique. Uh, the glaucoma secondary to Stuch Weber, it's even more unique than the others because it has a, a different, like a bimodal distribution that we're going to talk right now. And also the treatments can be a little bit uh, different. There's more risk for bleedings. And there's still a lot of research and a lot of uh, knowledge that we have to gain from this disease. In Stuch Weber, um, we know there's that poor wine facial telangiectasias, that is the nebius flavius, and usually the side that is affected will have a ipsilateral glaucoma. Some other vascular anomalies that affect both sides, it, it can come with bilateral affection and bilateral glaucoma. Uh, it also comes uh, often with intracranial angiomata. The glaucoma arise for two different mechanisms. It's very different. Uh, some kids are very little and have glaucoma because their angle is not developed quite right. That has a primary congenital glaucoma. Opening the drainage of the eye is very important in those cases. And then there is a second mechanism, and that usually happens when the glaucoma develops later in life, more in teenagers or adulthood, that is the elevated episcleral venous pressure. And that makes it that uh, the drainage system of the eye drains into some channels, and those channels drain into veins. If those veins have a higher pressure, the, the communication, the, the fluid is not going to drain as easy if the pressure is high on the veins that is supposed to drain. Here we have some photos of a, a little baby. We can see that the um, uh, skin mark here, and we can see that this eye, uh, the left eye is bigger than the right eye, and that's because that was the eye affected that had a higher pressure. On the surgery, we can see that we open up the, the skin of the eye, the tissue, and we can see those vessels on the sclera, that this is like a more uh, prominent, way more prominent than what we find in other, in other eyes. If you can see, we don't see as much through the, here through the conjunctiva, but once we open up the conjunctiva and the tenon, like we can see all these vessels that are like way more prominent. We also deal with choroidal hemangiomas. Uh, no. that hemorrhages during uh, surgery and uh, expansion of the choroidal space like uh, during the surgery. So uh, sometimes we have to do some uh, different manipulations during surgery. What do we do uh, for testing? Uh, well, so we will depend a lot on the age of the patient. We talk about uh, when somebody, uh, when a kid is born, we don't know if there's glaucoma or not. It is a good idea to have uh, it see the uh, pediatric ophthalmologist to check a pressure. We have some tests to check pressure. They're very easy. We don't even need to instill a, an eye drop on the eye. So it's very worth to get a, an exam in clinic for, for 
just for baseline, just to prevent or to detect as early as we can is a, is a plus. When we can do testing, we talk about three uh, different types of tests. The first one we do, we see here, this is a visual field test. This is gonna tell us if we have some areas that we don't see that well on the side. Glaucoma pre usually preserves the central vision until later uh, stages, but uh, we start uh, with glaucoma, we start losing the visual field on the sides. So the visual field is a test we will have to do. The second test is an OCT or optical coherence tomography. It is a photo, a special picture of the nerve that is going to tell us uh, that uh, how rich is the nerve on fibers. So for example, in this photo, we can see a lot of uh, this red color on the bottom on the top. This is a very rich uh, nerve, it has a lot of fibers. It looks really healthy. And the third test we have to do is like also have photos from like regular pictures from the optic nerve. And this is very valuable because over like a 10 year difference, we can see how the appearance of the nerve was and compare it to the present. Here we have an example of a, a visual field, like a full visual field. This patient, for example, has a defect here inferiorly. So this patient is seeing through the center, but down here is like very peripheral. There's an area that doesn't see as well. So that test is going to check, help us check to monitor this to see if this advances or it stays stable. And you can see uh, this will correspond this defect with this OCT defect. So this circle, this uh, shows that the fibers are very rich, but we have a little lagging area. There's a missing area on the top part. This defect corresponds with the visual field inferiorly. This is a uh, fundus of the eye. Those are the spots that are checked on a visual field, on a standard visual field. They will check the, the, how the patient is seeing on this one, on this other spot, on, on different areas. There are other tests that are more intensive and check the center of the vision in this uh, circle. And it will check uh, all these areas. Like So we have more information to see if we have any spots that have been affected. Here we have an example of a patient that has a, a um, optic nerve exam. It's pretty good, a little... Uh, uh, like th thicker on the bottom part than the top one. And here we have a patient that has lost fibers on the superior one. Uh, comparing uh, with time, we have here, uh, this patient has had like a, from 2013 to 2019 tests. Uh, and we can see that notice any differences. This is again another OCT example. And very important to take photos of the nerves. So we can see here uh, those two uh, pictures and we can uh, have the photos up on the screen and check the patient and see if we see any difference. Uh, how uh, is the opinion looking? We can all take the whole uh, back of the retina. So you can see those are the eyelashes here. And this is a wide angle camera that checks not only the nerve, but we can see uh, if there's any uh, choroidal hemangiomas and compare. Nowadays, new things that are coming out that are helping a lot for children and for adults, for both of them, is these machines uh, that do virtual reality visual fields. There's like a headset uh, and we have a clicker on the hand and uh, the patient just puts that on and it is way easier to perform those visual fields. Those visual fields are tedious. They are long procedures to do. And if we can make something uh, easier for the patient, that is always uh, like very, very welcome. So we are using those in our clinics nowadays. It's very important the way we take the pressure. Um, we have the, the standard is like to put an eye drop on the eye and check with that blue light, like we see on the first photo. But we have other measures like the tono pen. For children, what we were saying, like uh, if I have a child that has a stooge ever, I, we don't know if it has glaucoma, it is important to bring them in because we can check with these devices uh, without eye drops, not even a drop of anesthesia. They don't feel this. This is very, very easy to do and it gives us very reliable pressures. Sometimes we have to play with kids uh, here. Uh, sometimes like it, it's worth to let them play with the equipment, check the pressure on their own uh, dolls, for example. And another advance that we had lately is uh, the ability of having those devices. This is called uh, the eye care. We can have it for uh, home. And some of the, our patients now, adults and children, they can uh, have access to those uh, monitoring uh, devices, uh, pressure monitoring devices. This last child uh, lives uh, like in a place that there's not very access to, to 
uh, coming to the doctor as often. And she actually had the monitoring. She, they, they purchased a device like this. And we saw how the pressure were going. That was her right eye. It's here in blue. The pressure were over, like you see here, 30, 35. So, so she was having a spikes of high pressures here on the uh, on this eye. And uh, you could see the fluctuation. We were adding medicines and everything. Uh, we got a lot of measurements. So we really knew very well uh, how what was going on with this uh, home monitoring device. We did surgery. And then we could see on the second uh, uh, phase here, that's the post-operatory phase. We, it's a... Um, we put a device that the pressures can get a little higher and then start going lower. And that's why we, we have the information here so we can adjust the medications without the need of her coming here like as often as we would need if she didn't have the device. And we can see later how the pressures, they're way lower. They are maintained like close to like in the lower teens right now on that. Advances, advances new applications that are uh, really benefiting uh, patients nowadays. In terms of treatment of glaucoma, we have a lot of medications. We actually have five family of medicines that we can give uh, to try to control the pressure. And we actually have a combinations of eye drops. We like to start with a monotherapy. Everybody is different. In glaucoma, everyone is different. In glaucoma, in Sush Weber, even more. Every case is different. It is worth to try one medication at a time. If we determine that we need two together, sometimes they can be combined on the same eye drop. And we have uh, solutions that are like without preservatives as well for eyes that are more sensitive. In terms of surgery, we do have uh, options as well. We can treat the drainage. Um, and a lot of times in Stuttgart, the corneas are clear, which is an advantage respect other kind of glaucomas. And we can work from the inside of the eye, which is like more comfortable for the patient. So those procedures like uh, that we work from inside, we can just like uh, incise the 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 in, inside a channel that drains the fluid. Like here, you can see like there's a catheter going right inside of the uh, Schlem's canal or the the canal that would drain the fluid, and we're just gonna dilate it and we can open it too. When we work, um, this is the inside corner of the eye. And there is like a net. There's a net that has different layers, and this net. Um, makes it going through a small incision through the cornea spares the conjunctiva in case uh, the patient needs any procedures later that is that is a very important so if we work on this area of the angle we can do uh, there's procedures that we put a tiny implant to keep it open or we can do other procedures that without implants there's been a lot of advances a lot of new techniques um we do need a special lenses to access that area of the eye, uh, position the microscope and, and new, like good definition of the microscope to do this, know the anatomy of the drainage, and also de deal with some blood reflux, which we have in all the patients. And But with the Sush Weber, we have to be a little more careful um, that that doesn't score the view. We can open the drainage in different ways. Some people do little op spot openings on the drainage, and that's going to... Uh, facilitate the drainage of liquid. Sometimes we can just do like a sector uh, or, or we can do the whole drainage like 360 degrees. There's new devices, relatively new devices, new applications. This is evolving all the time. So this is very exciting areas to work and do micro invasive surgery. And this is all both for children and adults and it works very, very well. Here we can see a video of this device that it's just like um, cutting open, uh, getting a little opening on the drainage. We are threading a, a catheter in the drainage of the eye and retrieve it back. While we retrieve it, that's going to deploy some, um, uh, like a jelly, like a substance that will dilate those channels that go into the veins. And finally, we can also thread back the filament and just open it up. We can just push the filament and really literally rip open that um, area of resistance and that works nicely. When we do this, we can see that some blood appears in the eye. It happens always with the Stuge a tiny bit more because of the reflux of the veins. And we can see here we do, we're going to treat the other side as well. Now we retrieve the catheter back and we just complete the treatment inferiorly. So you makes it that it doesn't bleed. Of the jelly.
the blood will reabsorb and go away. Other techniques, um, there are similar other techniques. Some of them use like two little incisions and we can use a catheter with a light. So that way we can know all the time where we are uh, in what area we are being. Like this one is a similar technique, but we're just using that filament with a blinking light so we can see uh, where uh, we are advancing. At the time that we advance, we dilate those drainage systems. If the own drainage system doesn't work, we can put some implants like to, to, to help um, with um, uh, pressure. And there are different types on the market. And we have to be very careful to not do a huge decrease on pressure. If a patient has a pressure of 35, we cannot go to eight like that, that quickly. Uh, it's not good for anybody. Uh, in these cases, there's even, it's more risky because the eyes can bleed. So we will have techniques to, to make it uh, so it doesn't decrease as much. And here we have, a, this was a three-year-old that had all this, we opened the skin of the eye, all these vascular um, meshwork of vessels here. So um, we have to be careful that we don't uh, do like a decrease of pressure to sudden. Uh, lastly, it's very important to treat the whole patient. It's not, we are not only treating pressure, we are only treat, treating vision and the patient, the whole um all the implications that it has. And we said with children, we need to make sure the eye develops properly. We'll have to do visual rehabilitation. If we need to patch it, we need to do glasses, make it work while we are little because we can get the best outcomes that, uh, when the patients are like uh, young. Patients that are older, they don't have that risk of uh, having a lazy eye. After age eight, nine, uh, there's, th that risk is not there, luckily. But we also have to treat the, the, the whole thing and the uh, in adulthood, uh, those patients can have, um, they might need, some people are controlled well with eye drops, some people will need some, some interventions, but the key is to have a constant uh, treatment, like a follow-up, so don't skip appointments, don't skip testing, don't, if we are on a treatment with eye drops, uh, like continue the care. During the pandemic, unfortunately, we saw a lot of um, patients that didn't have access because, you know, everything was so difficult to uh, and the hospitals closed, or some people uh, didn't have medication for a period of time. So we will see some people that the glaucoma advanced. Uh, nowadays we are doing better, so it is important to just continue with the treatments and, and, and diagnosis. And that's all I wanted uh, to bring up.